it'll still get you where you're going. But when you go get a Thai massage, is it three hours? I don't know. I mean, I would have Very rarely. Yeah. Very rarely. Because I could have said, well, I'm a master at Thai massage. How do I feel like using that word? It's really not like for you, it's more for yeah. other people. Yeah, like I don't... Mm. Um, I recently started making YouTube videos, and in the YouTube videos I would say advanced time massage for like neck pain or whatever. Now why do I put that in the video? It makes people think. People who are looking at time massage, they already know what time massage is. What do they want to see? Beginner or advanced? Yeah. Ah. And then they expect more out of you to show them something. Ah. Like but their expectations change by using language and verbiage, yeah. which is like Benny. It's like personal brand. Robert, personal brand. Reboot. Oh, okay, time massage. They're different categorizations. You're influencing what consumers think they're going to get. If you went into massage envy tomorrow and the therapist had a mat down, what would you think? It was like you were, it was like a bait and switch. Like, what are you doing? Yeah, people would deal with me and they're like, they're at the chiropractor's office and they're like, dude, what, what is this hippie doing? Like, the dude with the long hair, like, I don't understand what his mat is. And I'm like, come here. You got neck pain? The guy would be like 300 pounds. Um, at one point, I had a choice. I had a table in one room and a mat in the other. That was awesome because then you had both. And I talked to Vincent. Vincent's 300 pounds, looked like he was a linebacker. I was like, Vincent, listen, you having neck problems? I can't do nothing on that table, man. It's not going to work. You work with me on a mat, I'm going to hook you up. And he's like, okay, whatever you want. I had my knee in his neck. He loved it. But I had to educate. I had to build a personal brand. Once I've worked with him and he likes it, where else can he go get this? And that's how you win. And that was the question that I was yeah. going to ask you. How do you get customers to return? Okay. And how do you uh, find the time to make sure that your schedule is flexible enough or your availability is enough to keep all these clients that you get? Because from my understanding, as of right now, you represent <clears throat> yourself. Yeah. You're the only one. Doing reboot or, sessions. Reboot. So yeah. All the clientele is going straight to you. Yeah. So there are a variety of parameter changes based on what I'm doing. And because the sessions are three hours, how many clients am I going to see a day? Two or three? Two. I, I won't even do three. I think it's just too much, personally. Um, I don't think it's fair enough for that third client. What, what are you making that face for? Said that's a lot of money, though, for just, you know, a day. If you just okay, well, if, so if I see two clients a day, how much do I make? Two clients? How you, how you feel about making $480 a day? That is amazing. So here's what I figured out. Based on the numbers right now, without changing my fees, if I can take you out of massage school and train you from the ground up and you're in the same situation I am, and I can teach you how to do what I do and do three hour sessions, suspension system, abdominal work, all the stuff I know. And you can charge this same fee. You can work four days a week, two clients a day, you'll make $100,000 a year. Just on clients. Now, how many ads do I run for clients? Paid ads for clients. Ads? Never. Never, because you just. Yeah, like I had to differentiate because I was teaching classes and I was selling retail and like got a subscription service and I got all this online stuff going on. Because online was like I need to blanket like Eminem. I need to put out Rap God, have nine million people see it, and then like, you know, twenty thousand come to the concert or whatever. Does it make sense? If I ran ads, I would be booked out three months in advance. I wouldn't have time to come here and do this talk. I care about you guys. That's why I drive an hour one way to come in and like educate and share. <clears throat> this is completely doable. And when you offer a service that massage envy can't touch, you get a chance to specialize if that's what you want to do. You'll notice that I'm not trying to just steer you to do what I'm doing. I'm really just trying to invite you to dream. Like, what do you want to create? There were people who thought that Dre and Easy were nuts. What do you mean, gangster rap? Like what? 
you can't write songs about F the police. It's like, well, watch. It worked in a big way. Do you have other questions about that? I think we're going to do a little bit of body work. Are you guys having problems with anything? Physically? Are you neck. <laughs> neck? What's up with your neck? I think I just slept wrong. Just slept wrong? You just got a little crick in it? Okay. Is it like stiff to one side? Or? Yes. Yeah. I get, I take um, Percocets and I get injections all the time. I've got like degenerative discs in my neck and I've got freaking uh, herniated disc along my spine. So. Low back? Mm -hmm. Yeah. How does the Percocet and stuff help? It's like taking candy now. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't really touch it much. Yeah. Um, is there an opiate epidemic in the United States? Oh, yes. oh, there's apparently a plane relief to go around. If you can help people in pain, when you talk about how do you get clients to come back, I don't want to gloss over that. If people want relaxation, are they going to come back? Yeah. yeah. Maybe, but not yeah. so much. You know. If you deliver on what they're looking for, um, here's the other thing. Can I compete with, uh, say, look, no, I don't want to advertise them. I'm not, I'm not even going to mention your facility. Take that. Burn me, will you? Mm. Um, if I go to, like, Massage Envy, can I provide as relaxing an environment as Massage Envy? Probably. What, what's a higher-end spa that you guys know about? More, more relaxing. The accoutrements, the facility, the facade. We, we visited uh, Helena Spa. Yeah. That, that was pretty. Yeah, we, what was the name? Uh, Hel Helena. Helena. Helena? Helena? Okay. So, Helena, can you compete with Helena to deliver relaxation, like in the facility? You could. I mean, if you had the resources and the finances, yes. Yeah, it, would, it would be a big real estate expenditure yeah. probably. First starting off, right? It's one of the reasons I focus on pain relief. When I work on, let's say you, because you have chronic pain, you're taking Percocets and you mentioned them like candy. I'm, what's your name? Israel. Israel. So Israel, listen, um, I have a history in chronic pain management. I was in a car accident. Um, I don't know if I have herniated discs, but I definitely have some degree of chronic pain that I manage using massage and body work. I'd love to work with you and see if we can make your Percocet not candy. So you don't have to take it every day or you know, help you with chronic pain. That's really my, my specialty. If I can work on him in one session and blow his mind, is he more likely to come back? Yes. Mm -hmm. And he's also more likely to leave really good reviews on Google and Yelp, which means I get more chronic pain clients. What I tend to do, Israel, um, in my practice, because I am diversified, I'm not just seeing clients. This client's class is retail subscription service. I've got multiple revenue streams, right? I don't want you to come back. I want to be able to give you one session and fix the car. And you go, dude, this dude's an honest mechanic. I've never had what this guy does. Are you likely to send your friends with their cars? So what I'll do is after I work on him, 16 years experience, I can usually do a good intake, work on you, find out what's going on and say, listen, my hope is to drop you by about two points on a pain scale. How do you feel about that? That'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. Now, if I dropped you two points on a pain scale, would you be more likely to rebook? Mm -hmm. Now, if I dropped you four points on a pain scale, are you more likely to rebook? Yeah, definitely. And I have to tell him, if he dropped four points on a pain scale, listen, what are you at normally, by the way? Uh, generally about a six. About a six. So he's dropped to a two. <clears throat> One, I made a best friend. He's going to want to drink beer with me after the session. Uh, two, I can say, listen, your pain is likely, because this sounds like it might have been a longer issue you've been dealing with, your pain might spike back up again. I don't want you to feel disappointed, like it takes time, especially if you have soft tissue challenges, because your soft tissue, your muscles, your nervous system has been responding to whatever's going on where the discs are like pressing on a nerve. We, it's going to take time. My guess is, Israel, um, not having worked on you, that we'll do this session. If I can get you to drop by two points on the pain scale, we could probably do it again. If we can do it two times, we can probably help you work on yourself in various ways. I'll have enough information at that point where I think I can show you how to work on yourself and you can do some of your own self-care and maintenance. Do you see I'm trying to wean him off? How do you feel about a, ladies, when you go out to a party, how do you feel about a guy when he's needy? 
He's a puppy. He needs your attention. <laughs> you want to go out on a date with him? <laughs> He's needy. You want to go out with him? Y'all all making faces at me. <laughs> now, what do you do when you have a nice conversation with a guy and he's not needy at all? He almost had a good conversation and mildly ignored you afterwards. <laughs> oh, she laughs. Mm -hmm. I know the game. I know the game. I played it. The same. No, it just, it just like he's just like had to play a conversation. Next. And then you're like, oh, come back. That was a nice conversation. The same thing happens in business. When you're needy for clients, what happens? I need a client, need a client, need a client, need a client. It's like there's something like massage therapists, when they make video, here's what they do. Uh, my name is Robert Gardner. You can come get a massage with me. My number is 512-905-2998. Do you want to get a session with me? Yeah. But if I educate, share in a digital form, I like, you know, have a nice conversation with you and then I ignore you, so to speak. She's like, that's mean. I can believe you do that. <laughs> Not ignore, but like just move on. People are more likely to trust me if I give them a ticker tape of free content information. If I'm the CNN of massage, who are they more likely to trust? Robert Gardner. Yeah, and that's, that's been a long, long standing like game as far as how do you play that? How do you en engender trust via video production? I'm also a guy. I work in my home. How do you ladies feel about going to see a guy who works in his home? Sketchy. That's me. Sketchy massage with Robert Gardner. <laughs> um, videos. You put the videos on your website. A lady came in one day. I was working on her. She got the three hour, the reboot, right? Uh, we were about an hour in and she's like, you know, I was concerned you might have been a serial killer. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, well, I could still be. I mean, there's a compost pile in the back. <laughs> I was like, what got you over the hump? Like you came in for the session and she's like, oh, I watched like 10 of your YouTube videos. That's how I win. There's a reason I make those videos. She trusted me. She trusted me enough to come into a strange man's house to get a session for something she had never heard of. That is how I won. But I had to do a lot of work because it would have been easier just to go to Massage Envy, right? That, that would have been no effort. Just sign up, you know, sign your life away, go work, Shh, done. Different marketing. I think it's easier to rebook clients for pain relief, especially when you demonstrate a skill set initially. So somehow you've gotten in the door, Israel. But after I give that session and you've had benefit, I'm like, hey, are you feeling better? What's your pain at now? And you were at a six and you tell me I'm at a three. I'm like, awesome, great. We had a little bit more than two points. That's good. You know, I will tell him probably it may spike. Don't be overly concerned. It's been a long standing issue. I would like to see you again in a week to two weeks. I think for the pain that you have, again, if I can get it to reduce like we did today, if we can get it to do that again, I suspect there can be ongoing maintenance where we can reduce your pain. How do you feel about that? Yeah. Cool. Did you want to go ahead and book now? Yeah. Cool. Sometimes I say, nah, I got to check my schedule. I'm like, okay, cool. The online schedule are on my website. You can go ahead and sign up. If I don't hear anything from you for in two or three days, I'm going to go ahead and email you or text you. Is that okay? Yes. I'm just trying to maintain connection. I will also, when I send him a follow-up email, let's say I've shown him, he said he had pain, like, down, is it down your leg? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's say I, I found out his gluteals are tight. I'll send him a copy of a YouTube video where I use a tennis ball and show him how to work on himself. Now, when I send him that link to the video, I'm also going to include links to all of my social media and say, Israel, I don't know if you use Snapchat, Twitter, you know, Instagram, whatever. If you want to follow me on social media, I put out lots of tips and uh, self-care stuff that you can do at home to kind of manage your own pain. Because I want him to have a conversation with me online. Like he can message me on Instagram and I, I will answer. Make sense? That rebooking process, I think, is important. It also means that if he's, say, following me on my Facebook page, he's more likely to be able to share that stuff with his potential friends, colleagues, family. I get more views. You get more notoriety. Social media. Social media is both. It's like, it ain't Fox News no more. This is the most potent communication tool in human history, and it will dwarf anything the printing press ever did. Trust me. <sighs> so, you want some work? What's your name? In the back? Stephon. 
Stefan, you want some work? Yes. You can come up. What time is it? 11 30. What? How do we do how do we do an hour and a half before I did anybody work? Robert talks too much. <laughs>